also how to animate at the same time. So we had three weeks of training and then you had to pass the training. And there was artists that didn't pass the training either. So I felt very fortunate that I was selected. And then he touched on a little bit about how it was created. Um, they did, they, they did a live action film of regular actors with Douglas Booth and Jerome Flynn, I'm sure. Uh, some of you probably recognize him from Game of, Game of Thrones. Um, there's a, a Chris O'Dowd, you're probably familiar with him from Bridesmaids. And uh, the other actors, they, they did a, a regular live action film and then we took the film frame by frame and we animated each frame. There are 65,000 frames. So there are 65,000 painted frames. And it took a little over, for between six and seven years for 125 artists to create this. I have about 13 seconds or so in the film and it took me four months to do that in 13 seconds because it takes 12 painted frames for one second of film. And they double that, so it's actually 24 frames for a second of film. But but you double, you know what what you do. Um, and then uh, we did a form of rotoscoping, and rotoscoping is projecting the image from your frame onto your canvas. And they used to do that with cartoons. That's how they did cartoons. Um, but uh, we had to go a step further and be creative with that. We weren't just filling in a, a solid color like you see in cartoons. We had to have the expressive brush strokes. We had to have built uh, impasto style strokes, that, which is, means thick paint. You can see the ridges and uh, we also had to do color matching because um, we had 125 artists, we had several uh, sub-scenes within scenes, and so they would give one artist a sub-scene and another artist a sub-scene, and they had to be pretty consistent. And sometimes an artist would leave and another artist would have to take over, and so you had to be exact if, if, it was, if you were taking over someone else. That didn't happen very often, but uh, it did happen. Um, See, I'm trying to think of what else uh, you, they normally ask. But I, well, let's go ahead and just open up for questions. And okay, I'll start by asking a question, then I'll open it up to anybody else that has um, questions. I'll come bring a microphone to you. Um, so my question for you is, well, artists are weird people in and of themselves. Thank know, you, thank you. <laughs> What's it like working with 124 other artists? What's it like getting all those personalities together? And how did that actually work? Were you guys like assigned teams? paint a certain scene or what would, what would that look like? Uh, we went into, uh, there were three studios. I was in Gdansk, Poland, which is at the very top of Poland on the Baltic Sea. Uh, that was the largest studio. We had about 93 stations there for artists and then there was a studio in uh, Warsaw and then also in Athens and they had about 15 or 20 artists at those smaller studios. Um, I was at the largest studio in Gdansk. We had uh, I, I think it was like about 93 stations, but we all went to this big like warehouse. But when you went in, it was, um, uh, we had our own cubicles. And the reason why we had our own cubicles, we didn't see much of each other while we were painting. We would take breaks and you know go to the break room and mingle and you'd be sitting next to someone from Ireland or Austria or Serbia or India. Um, or in Poland, <laughs> um, uh, and that's how we we interacted with each other. And in the break room, we could say, "Well, how did you? How are you? What are you? What are you mixing to um, get this color?" Or um, you know, we you know share our frustrations. The the paint would start drying out if you were working on a painting for a while. We wanted to keep them wet to make them easier to to change. Uh, make some changes and um, you know so we interacted in the, the um, break room but for the most part we were by ourselves and the reason why we were by ourselves is because we used a computer system we had our canvas board in front of us but we also had a cute computer above a computer screen and we had to 
match the registration on the computer screen because that's what would be sent to production and whatever you were painting here on the canvas might not be near what you're looking at on the computer so you have basically you had to learn how to uh, uh, mix color you, what you were seeing on the canvas you had to interpret how it would look on the computer and sometimes it was very, very different. Like I felt like I was painting. If you see my my final frame of one of my shots, it just looks like mud. But on the computer, it looks, you can see the strokes and the different colors and that kind of thing. Um, but, and so, and with that, um, so we had to have the lighting just right from day to day. And the lighting would change the color in a frame if you weren't careful. And they, in the beginning, they didn't, they just had everyone, you know, right next to each other painting. But they realized that when people walked by, um, it would change the, the color. If they were taking a, a picture of their shot, it would actually change the color. Like, for instance, I would wear a black t-shirt one day and I would make a frame and then I would maybe wear a white t-shirt the next day and just that difference would make a difference on the screens and that's how sensitive the computer registration was so um, so we had to keep curtains pulled in our little cubicles and to keep the light consistent and so that's why we were kind of separated from each other while we were painting but uh, so thankfully you know we would visit each other's paws occasionally and see what we were doing and you know that kind of thing but for the most part we were by ourselves well saying all that really brings into perspective how much or how tedious this this work was that you guys put into this very yeah. yes <laughs> I'll, I'll cover off the microphone to anyone that has questions oh this is an easy pass here we go were you given like time limits did you have to get so much done per day or per week or whatever it depended on the shot like um, I had uh, close-ups facial close-ups I had two faces in my in my close-up so it took a lot longer to do those shots and then someone else might have the shot of the people you know the small people in the distance and they're just barely moving around or so uh, we were given shots and they would say okay this is a level three or this might be a level 10 and they would give us we didn't have to stick to it but we were painted or we were paid by the frame and they expect you to to do a frame in a certain amount of time and um, you know most of us the newer ones were really slow I guess uh, the ones that had been there for a long time uh, there's one girl in particular um, they told me about because you know I was kind of gripe I'm like well I think I'm kind of slow <laughs> And I guess she was really slow in the beginning and she struggled for like a year. She was very slow and then one day something just clicked and she became the fastest painter. Um, I think if I would have been there a little bit longer then, then I probably would have you know, picked up the speed a little bit more with more confidence and that kind of thing. Because not only was I painting Van Gogh style, which mine is very, my style, typical style, is realism. It's very tight and detailed, and you know, the impressionistic is very loose and sloppy. And I struggled with that just because I didn't want to be messy. <laughs> and uh, then I also had to learn the animation at the same time. So I was really slow, especially in the beginning. How complicated was it to do the fight, fight scenes? I didn't do the fight scenes, but um, another artist did the fight scenes. But sometimes those were easier because um, the the uh, movement was kind of blurry, and you could be a lot looser with that, and you didn't have to be as specific. So sometimes that kind of stuff was actually easier. Yeah, I I thought the film looked terrific, and the story was wonderful. Um, I noticed the uh, format on the screen was uh, more squarish than a lot of movies we've seen. So I'm, I was wondering what size canvas board or what uh, format you guys worked in and what did you think of the projection onto the screen? 
yeah i was noticing that